black cockamamie kind of voices that from out of the west come the hoofbeats of the great horse. And you don't do it that way. You'd say from out of the west come the hoofbeats of the great horse sofa. I'm Mort Cooper, your host on Change of Hi, I'm Mort Cooper, and I can honestly say, honesty isn't wanted anymore, apparently, in our day. Maybe you disagree with that. Let's talk about the honesty of voices. I believe that a number of people don't realize they have a great voice, and they honestly don't do a thing about it. Doing Oprah is the title of the show today. Doing Oprah? Yes, indeed. I, Mort Cooper, did Oprah a few weeks ago, and uh, it was a great show. One of the fellows on the program said, I don't know why they think I'm gay. I'm, I'm not gay, said nationally, the 15 million people watching the Oprah show. Maybe he isn't gay, and it really doesn't make a difference to me and to many others if he's gay or not, to those who feel that uh, gender is important or uh, a relationship uh, where you are, your, your sexual status is important. Forgive me, it really doesn't matter to me. The voice does. And when he said, I don't know why people think I'm gay, that's too much for me. The voice is really saying something that he is unaware about or he doesn't want to face, in my opinion. So doing Oprah, I did his voice and I changed it for the better. He had a great voice, but he said it like, well, I don't understand why. Folks, there is a sound to a certain type of of being, if you want to put it that way, like I say, hey, uh, maybe you want a uh, deal, you want a deal like that. Uh, it may not be mafioso, but uh, the voice says something that you may not want to say. Are you generalizing? Am I generalizing? No, we live in a society with stereotypes. So if I say, I'm not gay and so forth, and, and you aren't, or you are, what difference does it make? Does your voice really say something that you don't want it to say? In my opinion, all too often, it does. Also on the Oprah show, we had some other people who talked very funny, very high, and they said they wanted to change it, but on the show they didn't want to change it. They wanted to stay with that voice. If you want to change your voice for the better, it is my opinion you can do it very quickly and very directly and very dramatically. A number of people don't realize they can do that. They can change for the better. So in studio with us, we have a young man. We, we brought people who have voices I've never heard before this program, I've never met them before, and I'm going to work with them directly so you can hear the change. Are you ready yes, to I hear am. the transformation? Are you ready, sir? Yes, I am. Are you, are, you, are you galloping forward to let people know that you have this other voice? What is your first name, sir? Brian. What do you do, Brian? I'm unemployed right now. You're, not, you're, you're like a lot of other people. Definitely. 9.6 in California, unemployed? More than that, I would say. More than that? Yeah. So you don't believe the stats are right? They say it it's not could be, but I think there's a lot more people unemployed than they have. Yeah, I think you're right. But it's, it's, it's the other thing, too. Folks, it's like your voices. A lot of people say their voices are all right. They, 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 they're going to buy their voices. There's nothing they can do about it. Or, well, who cares about a voice? Do you care about the way you appear? Do you care about the way you shake hands? Do you have a dead fish? handshake, and if you do, is it telling you something? Maybe you <laughs> like a dead fish handshake. Brian, do you like a, a dead fish handshake? Not at all. Do you like a dead fish voice? No way. Have you ever done anything about your voice before today? Not that I can think of, no. Do you like a voice when 007 says, Bon, 007? Definitely. You like it? Yes. Do you like Patrick Stewart who plays Captain Picard? Um, I feel we have to do something about this immediately. He's all right, yes. He's all right. Mm -hmm. How would you say, I am not a UFO? I would say, I am not a UFO. And you're not an extraterrestrial? I hope not. No, I want you to say no like you mean no. No. Say it like this, no. No. Say right the same way. Right. Tell me your first name with that voice, Brian. Brian. Say it louder. Brian. Good. Count one to five with that voice. One, two, three, four, five. Now lighten up, mellow out a little, say, Hi, my name is, and my name is Mort Cooper. So you say, my name is, say it the same way in the lower pitch. Hi, my name is Brian. And how do you normally say it, Brian? Hi, my name is Brian. Do you feel the difference? 
Yes, I do. Do you like the different voice? Yes, I do. I feel more authoritative. Say it, I feel more authoritative with the lower pitched voice. Say it again. I feel more authoritative. Now, you're, you're stomping down on that voice right now to get it right. Mm -hmm. it, it's not that easy for you to just use it down here, right? No, it's making me work a little harder. Right. I want you to say the rain in Spain is mainly on the plane with that lower pitched voice. The rain in Spain is mainly in the plane. Okay, I want you to turn around and look at me this way and say the rain in Spain is mainly on the plane. The rain in Spain is mainly in the plane. Now hum it. <laughs> do you feel the buzz up here? I certainly do. Now say it, I certainly do. Say it at my level, I certainly do. I certainly do. Tell me how that voice sounds to you and use it. I think it sounds a lot more firmer and more controllable. Go back to the other voice and count one to five. One, two, three, four, five. And the voice I want, count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Tell the audience what the feel is, the different feel that you have for the new voice. A lot more firmer, more determined, more uh, powerful. Do you feel comfortable with it? Yes, I do. Would you like to use it? Definitely. Say definitely a little lower. Definitely. What if I told you you could use that voice, that it's yours? I would do that. But you've never done anything with your speaking voice before now. I've never thought to do so. Could it possibly be, and I'm only asking, that your voice may have been holding you back from getting a job? A little bit. Say a little bit a little lower. A little bit. Do you think people take your voice for you? I hope so. What if you use the other voice that sounds kind of kid-like? It sounds very young. I would think they'd treat me like a kid. Now use that voice and say, in the lower range, this is an adult voice. This is an adult voice. Do you think people will respond to you differently with this lower, fuller voice? They better. Really? Yep. Why? Because I'm using a better voice. Do you feel it? Yes, I do. Would you say that in changing this voice, you can change your life by having a different, better voice? Yes, I believe that I can. And yet, all your life you've never changed your voice. How old are you? Thirty-three. So you've used this other voice. Do you mind if I categorize it as a kid voice? Not at all. Count one to five in that voice you came on the set with today. One, two, three, four, five. And the new voice? One, two, three, four, five. Give me a little more power with it. One, two, three, four, five. And say, my name is Brian. My name is Brian. And how did you normally say it? My name is Brian. And even higher, my name is Brian. Which is, would you say, in contrast, that the other voice was a kind of throwaway voice? It was a weaker voice. I wouldn't say throwaway. Weaker? Yes. How else would you characterize it? Um, difficult to describe. I don't know. With the other voice, the one you came on with that you've always used, right? do you feel it got you heard, liked, and listened to? Depends on the person. Generally, would it be a voice that people would want to tune into and say that, hey, I'd like to listen to Brian? Um, no. Would you say that the old voice, the other voice, when you said hello, mm -hmm. said goodbye? Yes, it did. Now, I want you to say, this is my new voice. This is my new voice. Give me some power to it. This is my new voice. I like this voice. I like this voice. I'm going to use this voice. I'm going to use this voice. I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you have the chance for a better voice, and I want you to take that invitation and think about getting a better, more effective voice. Your voice should be around the lips and nose. You feel that mask resonance when you're doing that? Yes, I do. Before, did you feel it up here, or did you feel it around here? Was it just partial up there, around your nose? Just partial, yes. Right. Now you feel it around your lips and nose. Yes, I do. That is the voice that comes f from placing sound in the mask around the lips and nose where all good and great voices come from. That's what you want to use. I want you to take your finger, put it at the bottom of your breastbone, bottom of your breastbone, go, <laughs> and you feel the resonance around your lips and nose. Yes, I do. That's your voice coming out. And that's called the Cooper Instant Voice Press. It's named after me. I developed it. So, folks, you can take your finger, put it at the bottom of your breastbone, and go, mm -hmm, and you'll feel your resonance go right around your lips and nose, basically. And that's the voice I want people to get accustomed to and use because it gets you heard, it gets you liked, 
and guess you listen to. I'm going to ask you one question before we break. Okay. If I said, hello, Brian, how are you? And I talk like this, and then I talk like, hi, Brian, how are you? Which one would you like? The second voice. Why? It's a lot more pleasant to listen to. So you're saying a voice can get you heard, liked, and listened to? Yes. But up to 33 years of age, you never worked on your voice. I never thought about it. You never thought about it. What are you going to tell that audience then? Think about it. What are they going to think about? They're saying you're, you're a shill of some kind. You came on the show and we, we did this before. Did we ever meet before on this? No, we didn't. Tell that audience that. We never met before. Change your voice. So you changed it immediately, just coming on the set and I never worked with you before and I never met you before. Yes. We've been doing this before. What do people think? What do you think they think of the change for the better voice? Somehow we're playing games here? I hope not. But they think that. Wouldn't you think that if you were just watching the show? Possibly. Say right. 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 Use the mantra word, right, really, go. When you do that, you get your voice focused. People don't believe that they can change their voice for the better, one, two, three. What would you tell them? Uh, they can change your voice and make themselves more positive and more uh, presentable. You sound fantastic. How did you say that in the old voice? Say the same thing in the old voice. They sound presentable. You can't change. Correct. You've already changed to a new voice and you can't go back to the other voice right now. Is that correct? That's correct. Are you going to remember that? I hope so. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Brian for joining with me. We're going to have another young man come on to the set in just a moment. Change your voice, change your life. Is it possible? He's going to run hook himself and we're going to get a, a, another young man to join with us. What I'm trying to tell you is that you can do lots of things for your voice. You can improve it, one, two, three. It's easy enough to get a changed voice and you can do that without a great deal of angst. Do you know what the word angst is? It means tension and pressure and concern and anxiety. We have been down the road with big words. Uh, newspapers, the newspaper people love to put words like oxymoron and epiphany. Oxymoron means a contradiction in terms, and epiphany means the moment of truth. We don't simplify in our society. We don't use the simple words. We use the more involved, convoluted terms. I like to simplify. I work with the voice on a direct basis and simplify it to show that you can change in a matter of seconds. People realize that I teach for UCLA and I teach for the Learning Addicts, and I show people how to get a better, more effective voice. I'm going to show you how we can do this on another in-studio guest. Your name, sir? My name is Jim. Jim, have we ever worked on your voice before? No, we haven't. What do you do? Right now I'm an intern here at Century Cable, and I'm a student, a television student. So we, we garnered you into the studio. That's right. Do you feel... Kicking and screaming. Yeah, you've heard the changes of voice here. Yes, I have. And were these people real or are they... They are real people. They are real people. And there were real changes. There were real changes. One, two, three. One after the other. Very impressive. Right. Is the fact that it's impressive or is it simple when you see what I'm doing? I don't know, I haven't been sitting in this chair for this experiment yet, so I'll, I'll tell you when I'm done. But you heard the others. I, I did. Do you want to make that last call? I'm willing, yes. To your lawyer, before we change? I'm willing to sit here and uh, not call in the, uh, the uh, paid uh, uh, attorneys. I want you to say right like you mean right. Right. That's your word. Say it again. Right. Say right one. Right one. Right two. Right two. Give me a little more power, a little more oomph. Right one. Right one. Right two. Right two. Do you know what you're doing when you say those mantra words? I'm not sure. When you say, I'm not sure, your voice floats. I want you to say, I'm not sure, and say it like you're putting a little pressure on it. I'm not sure. That's it. Why don't you kind of put a little more oomph into your voice when you talk? I'm just asking. For one thing, we're very close together. And so I feel I should not be quite as loud as I might. I have a, a good playground voice, but we're so close together. So you feel that it's, a, it's an image, actually, you're talking about. You feel 
that you mm -hmm. want an intimate, confidential voice. You don't want to be aggressive or overbearing. And you feel with this right. other voice that you might be. Depending on the situation, but yes, the way, as close as we are now with such silence in the room, mm -hmm. I feel I, I shouldn't be too loud. Okay, I want you to say right again. Right. Now, when you say right, you feel you're loud. It's uh, louder than I've, I've been talking. You feel it's too loud for the positioning that we have. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm willing to experiment. Okay, let's try it. Say right one. Right one. I want you to count one to five with that voice. One, two, three, four, five. That's perfectly normal, and I'm going to tell the audience. It's perfectly normal, and I'm asking you to agree or disagree. If you find what I'm saying is accurate, write in, tell the studio, hey, this young man, what's your first name? Jim. Jim. Jim is perfectly normal with his voice. Right into the studio, and we affirm, affirm what's happening here, so that the people, when they change their voice, get your affirmation, get your backup. They're still a little wary of what's happening. You think you're loud now with that voice. It's a little louder than I started with. A little louder, but you feel it's too loud for the positioning that we have. Well, also, I, I'm, I'm interested. I saw one of your other programs, so I'm trying to uh, follow your directions. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, when I first started, I wasn't sure uh, mm -hmm. if I was loud enough. and So I'm just sort of feeling my way, I guess. This voice sounds louder than you normally talk. Probably so, yeah. Would you characterize it as being loud? No. Would you characterize it as being overbearing or aggressive? in the condition and the position that we have. The tone of voice I'm trying to use. Yeah, and I would place. say assertive. Assertive. I would say no. I would say it's very, very appropriate. Well, that, that's nice to hear. Now you're going back to the other voice. You're saying, mm -hmm. in that other voice, do you understand what I'm saying? Sure. You're letting your voice float. And I'm going to ask the audience, ladies and gentlemen, do you let your voice float? Do you let it float up there? And then, when you talk this way, you feel you're overbearing, aggressive, assertive, and it's not you. If I were to say I'm Patrick Stewart, and I'm not Patrick Stewart, playing Captain Picard, do you feel that he seems or feels to be overbearing or aggressive? People love the voice, and they love Roger Moore, playing 007. The woman go gaga. They have excellent voices. They, but they you do too. What I'm saying is, we all, ladies and gentlemen, and that's the premise of what I do, we all basically have star quality voice. We never take a single lesson on the speaking voice. We don't realize that it's there. We think it's very difficult to get that kind of voice, and I'm saying it's not mechanically. It's very easy to do with somebody competently directing you. The other factor that prevents you from changing is your voice image. The voice image is your concept of the sound itself. So Jim is talking to me pretty close, and he feels that he's loud, overbearing, in that sense that he's got too much volume. Do I have too much volume when I'm talking to you? I don't think so. Say I don't think so? I don't think so. Right. But when you said it the, sec the second way, the way I wanted it, with a little more energy, you felt, could I be saying that you are a little too loud? Well, I'm, I'm trying to follow your directions. Right. When you feel that you are too loud, though, I just want your feeling, your opinion. I, I say you're not, but I want to know what you think. I'm willing to accept your assessment, so maybe I'm not too loud. Yeah, but you're accepting my assessment, but your internal assessment, honesty. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not sure. You're not sure, right. And that's what people do. They waver. They're not sure. So the way you, you change for the better, and this is what I want you to know, is when you get direction as to what I'm doing, you go out and you do it, and you try it out on people. It's like driving a car. How do you know if you're too fast or too slow? How do you know if you're doing it right or wrong? You have to practice. Are you willing to go out and practice this voice? Yes, I am. Are you going to look at people and see if they're strangely looking at you when you lose when you use that voice? It may be involuntary. Right. Do do you look at me strangely when I talk to you this way? No. You accept it. I um yeah, I accept it. If I talk to you and said, Hi Jim, my name is Morty Cooper. I'm here with Jim, ladies and gentlemen, and then you told me, you told me to talk this way. And I said, but I feel very loud. Am I loud? No, you're not loud. But if I compare it from that sound to this sound. Right, the second sound is much more pleasing. Do you believe we live in a 
sound world where sound is important? Very important. You wear your glasses on the bridge of your nose, right? Yes. 200 years ago, Ben Franklin came along and told us to wear the glasses on the bridge of our nose. Before then, it was a monocle. Ladies and gentlemen, just a monocle for the rich and famous. Now, we know, put your glasses on the bridge of your nose. It's commonplace. Why can't we put our voices in the mask around the lips and nose where all good and great voices come from? The same way Ben Franklin told you to put your glasses on the bridge of your nose. It's that simple. It must take practice. It takes practice. But once you learn how to drive the car, can you drive the car? Yes, I can. How long does it take you to learn to drive the car? It took me several weeks. Okay. I'm asking you to go out, be Jim, trying this voice out. Okay. And say, hi, I'm Jim. Let me hear you introduce yourself. You just met me and say, hi, I'm Jim. Hi, I'm Mort Cooper. Now, how did you say it before? Hi, I'm Jim. Yeah. Do you feel the difference? Yes, I do. Say, yes, I do, a little lower. Yes, I do. The new voice, Jim, sounds phony to you. It feels artificial. It's different. And correct me if I'm wrong. It's not you. It's one of many uh, facets of me, obviously. Obviously, it's there. I couldn't put it into you if it's not there. Right? Right. If I shook your hand, I shake your hand, and my hand is a dead fish hand. Yeah. What is your feeling? Well, this person is not that crazy to meet me. Aside from that, what does it say about the personality? Uh, you're not a strong, assertive person. Aside from that, would you say that this person really is indifferent to you? Yes. If I say, hi, Jim, how are you? What does it say to you? That you're not, uh, that your words are not actually what you feel. Yeah. Now, there are various connotations we get from a voice. Mm -hmm. If you want a namby-pamby voice, hi, I'm Mr. Rogers, and I'm talking with kids, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you know that. Somebody told me that that's not his real voice. And is, is the real voice that we have much more significant and meaningful and rewarding than the voice that we use? Try that on for a fit. Did you follow what I said? If you use this voice, the lower, fuller voice that most of us have, the more resonant voice, does it get us heard like to listen to? Well, obviously it would if you judge it against the, the, the most famous announcers and actors. Or well, getting yourself heard. You said it before, it's like a dead fish. That's uh, right. If I say, hi, Jim, how are you? What does it say to you? Well, it's not exactly unpleasing. It's uh, like a comedian's voice or, or you, a cartoon voice. Do you want a cartoon voice? I personally would not. Say, I personally would not. Say in that lower voice. I personally would not want a cartoon voice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a book, and I know that you may feel it's kind of... When I say, this is a book, a lot of people don't read. If you, This is a self-help book on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life by me, Mort Cooper. I used to talk like this, and I have another book called Winning With Your Voice, Five Minutes a Day to a Better, More Effective Voice. It's in the library as well. If you want a better, more effective voice, think about the fact that it's there for you. It's not an involved, convoluted process to get a better, more effective voice. In my opinion, you can get it, but then you have to work on it. And the key to all of this is placing your voice up in the mask. Doing Oprah some weeks back, as I told you, Steve was on the program. Fifteen million people are listening, and Steve said, I don't know why people think I'm gay. Jim. What does his voice say? Whether he's gay or not, it doesn't make a difference. But what does the voice say? It says that he's not a, a serious, assertive person. It, it, of course, I, wa I wasn't there. I'm, I'm going to your interpretation. Yeah. 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 And people on the show were doing that. And they had a whiny voice. What does it say? Do, do people realize where their voice is? Or, and do they want to change? Maybe, I always ask, do you want to change your voice for the better? There are people folks who don't want to. There are people, and I accept you, you don't want to change, that's fine. You want a namby-pamby voice, you want a guy with a voice, you want to sound like, I feel that situation that we have. You want to sound like Henry Kissinger, he makes $25,000 a pop. I'm saying look-alikes don't make it and sound-alikes don't make it. So if you have a voice and it's an individual voice, it's really your voice. It's like fingerprints. We all have individual voices. I do not homogenize voices. I bring out the individual voice, and that's what you've been hearing. 
People have great star quality voices, but they think only the actors and the stars have it. And I'm saying it's not true, folks. We all basically have star quality voices, men and women and children, but we don't take a single lesson on it. You had a single lesson on your voice today. Yes, I have. Say, yes, I have. Yes, I have. How does it feel? It feels pretty good. Yeah. I believe people will say, he sounds pretty good. But that was a shill. Are you a shill? No. You're I've, not never, a shill. I've never seen you before. You've never seen so we change voices for the better, one, two, three. And are you going to go out and practice on this new voice? Yes, I will. What's your first name? Jim. Say, my name is Jim. My name is Jim. Say it in the old voice. Uh, my name is Jim. Do you feel the difference? Yes. Yes, I do. I say voices are important. They represent you. Quite often, folks, we misrepresent ourselves by the way we use our voice. You have a choice. You can use your real effective star quality voice that's there, or you can just let it be and bypass it. It's up to you. But think of this. It's myth that you cannot change for the better. It's a misconception that it takes a long period of time to get a better, more effective voice. You're listening to people in studio I've never met before changing their voice, as I do for the Learning Annex at UCLA, and as well as being a former professor there, clinical assistant professor at UCLA Medical Center, having been the director of the Voice and Speech Clinic. I served on the staff and faculty for 10 years and the director of adult studies at Stanford University some years ago. You can change for the better. I'm Mark Cooper. Change your voice, change your life. Thank you.